What's up, everybody? I am Ian, and in today's video, I get interrupted by pro drifters. Yeah, it's a little loud, but I love it. But before we head over to track time at Road Atlanta, I wanted to talk to you guys about one very specific thing in motorsport and action sports photography. And those are your SD cards. When I say yours, I really mean yours, because I have found that the only correct thing to do regarding your SD cards is to upgrade them for CF Express cards. Now, because I shoot Sony, all of my CF Express are only type A. I don't know why they won't switch over to B. They're cheaper cards. Maybe it's the body size. Maybe it's a patent somewhere. I don't know. But I do know that CF Express cards are just night and day better overall than the best SD card I've ever used. And don't get me wrong, I still have SD cards. I use the Lexar Gold 2000X, I think they are. The read speed is 300 megabytes per second, and the write speed is even 260 megabytes per second, which is great for an SD card. The issue is that when you are holding down that shutter button, just just like that, there's a buffer in your camera that, you know, it, it funnels all of that data into a single dropping point. And that funnel will get backed up if the write speed of your cards is not fast enough to handle the speed of your shooting rate and the size of your files. For instance, my A7R5 from Sony shoots 62 megapixel photos. It's it's a lot of data just shoving onto my cards. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. So even with the Lexar 2000X, cards, the golds, I still can't really hold the shutter for longer than about 40 to 50 shots, which for anything outside of motorsport and action sports photography, you're fine. You will survive. There is no reason to upgrade. This is a very specific thing. But for all of those others who are trying to get into motorsport photography or action photography, just be aware this is a thing because, and let's go back into those Lexars, 300 read and 260 write. But now the specs for my Sony Tough cards, the read speed is 800 megabytes per second, and the write speed is 700 megabytes per second. That's a massive jump. When I first got my CF Express cards, I just held down the trigger for the, the shutter button just to see, you know, at what point would the, uh, would the buffer cap and I'll be honest, I got to 200 shots and I just stopped holding the button because it was very clear that I'm not gonna hit a cap. And that's what I needed and that's fantastic and I love that. Don't get me wrong though, CF Express Type A and specifically Sony Tough Cards are a lot and there's no getting around that. But that's the thing, they're worth it. When you have to hold down that shutter button, you need to know that you're not gonna be held in place because of a buffer, because of a funnel. You need to know that all the shots you feel you have to get when a car is coming by or snowboarders going over a ramp or a cyclist is powering down a mountain, any scenario like that, you have to know, you, you have to trust it. And with an SD card, I'm sorry, but in those scenarios, I just don't. So I only use my SD cards when everything is in kind of prep mode for motorsport. So if I'm at the pits or the hot pit or, uh, you know, signings for, for fans from the drivers, that's a great time to have my SD card in because I'm not holding down the shutter. I don't need crazy long uh, bursts of photos to have one clean shot. But track time, yeah. I'm on my CF Express card. Speaking of track time, let's go over why variable ISO on your camera is so f***ing important. Track time. Well, the reason having a variable ISO is so important in motorsports or action photography as a whole is because 90% of the time you're gonna be shooting outside. The elements change constantly. And even if they don't, lighting will. So at some point, the lighting on your subject could be front facing, meaning they're facing the light in relationship to where you, the shooter, are shooting from. Or you could switch literally to just the other part of the track where you are now shooting into their shadows because the sun is behind them. Now to really cement this point to you, I am shooting today from Michelin Road, Michelin Raceway, Michelin Raceway Road, Atlanta which is where the second round of the Formula Drift season happens. And to get technical for a second, 
the low end of the bracket for your variable ISO really should be the lowest setting that your camera can get. The high end of your bracket should be dependent on your workflow and editing style. So I personally don't like to shoot anything past 8,000 ISO on this sensor. It really just depends on the sensor and your editing workflow. Yeah, it's a little loud. I love it. Now the next reason why having a variable ISO is just so goddamn important out in a position like this is because it's just one less thing to worry about. Just one. Makes it so much easier. So eliminating that step from your workflow allows you to actually concentrate more on other things like shutter speed, composition, depth of field, angle. These are all things that directly affect the story that your image is telling. <laughs> And lastly, for my shooting, for my workflow, for my look. How selfish of me. I prefer that my exposure compensation is actually not touched, just neutral, flat zero. Let's do all the things that you wanna do. But for yours, it is completely up to you. And just know that if you have a variable ISO set up, it does fluctuate with your compensation that you have set. So for me, if I'm at a zero and I'm at 8,000 ISO and I choose to go, hey, I want my exposure compensation to go down one full stop. Well, now it went from 8,000 ISO to 4,000 ISO or vice versa, but I wouldn't do that because that's just me. So that's all I got for you today, guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I hope this was beneficial for you in some way, some capacity. Uh, do me a favor, subscribe if this was helpful because I have plenty more videos on the way. Just takes a little while because I don't have an editor and I am a little busy. But uh, I hope to see you all on the next video. Take care.